Hello and welcome back to A-Level Biology Help. Today I'm going to be taking you through the principles of homeostasis and negative feedback section for AQA A-Level Biology. Near the end of the video, I'll be going through a couple of exam questions and explaining the mark schemes. Also, as always, there will be timestamps in the comment section so that you can skip to the different sections in the video if you do not, do not wish to watch the whole video. Right, so let's get started. So what do we mean by homeostasis? Now you probably have touched on homeostasis in GCSE, but if you have forgotten, then homeostasis is the maintenance of a constant internal environment by a physiological control system. However, when an exam question asks you for the definition of homeostasis, you just need to write that it is the maintenance of a constant internal environment. The factors, or well, some of the factors that can be controlled by homeostasis is, are temperature, blood pH and blood glucose concentration. So we are going to explain now how these are controlled by homeostasis. So let's start with temperature. When temperature is too low, there is not enough kinetic energy for enzyme substrate complexes to be formed. This means that the rate of critically important biological reactions for various biological processes is too slow. However, on the contrary, if the temperature is too high, then enzymes will denature. Now, for this chapter, you don't need to know about enzyme action in much detail, but sometimes exam questions will require knowledge from the proteins and enzymes section, which is part of the biological molecules unit in AS. So if you haven't watched my video on proteins and enzymes, you can feel free to check that out if you want. So when the temperature is deviated from the optimum, the body reacts to it and returns it to normal. So the next factor is pH. pH acts in a similar way to changes in temperature. So deviation from optimal pH, so if the pH is low or higher than normal, causes enzymes to denature, as the balance of H plus and OH minus ions are disrupted in the active site. So substrates are no longer complementary to the active site, so enzyme substrate complexes can no longer be formed. So the next or final factor that you need to know about is blood glucose concentration, or sometimes known as blood sugar. So when blood glucose concentration is too low, this results in cell death as glucose is required as a substrate for respiration. So when there is too little glucose, respiration can't happen at a high rate as glucose is the main substrate used for respiration, both anaerobic and aerobic respiration. However, on the contrary, if glucose concentration is too high, this means that the water potential of the blood is decreased. If you aren't familiar with the concept of water potential, go check out my video on transport across cell membranes where I talk about osmosis. The timestamp to that osmosis section will be in the comment section of that video. So go check that out in the corner if you haven't already. So as the water potential of the blood is decreased, this means that water leaves the cells by osmosis, so the cells can shrivel up. Then what can sometimes happen is that as the water is now in the blood, this means that the water potential of the blood is very high. So sometimes water can move back into the cells, which can sometimes cause cells to burst. So again, deviation from the optimal um, glucose concentration is detrimental and homeostasis can return it to normal. So now you are going to be um, taught about the concept of negative feedback, which you might have covered in GCSE. So negative feedback is restore systems back to their normal level when there is a change. So when there is a change from optimal temperature, optimal pH or optimal blood glucose concentration, for example, negative feedback is when um, the body reacts and returns these levels back to their normal or optimal level. Negative feedback systems happen in these stages. So it is similar to the um, reflex arc. So we have a stimulus, so the change in temperature, for example, 
Then we have a receptor, so in the case of temperature, a thermoreceptor, which detects the change in stimulus. The receptor then sends a signal along sensory neurons to the central nervous system, which contains a relay neuron. Um, for example, um, the central nervous system will be the brain or the spinal cord. Then an impulse is sent back along a motor neuron to the effector, which could be the hypothalamus in the case of temperature, which then initiates a response, which lowers or increases the temperature back to normal. So we have negative feedback, but you can also get positive feedback, which is the opposite. So deviation from the optimum value stimulates a change that results in an even bigger deviation from the optimum. A good example of this are um, contractions during labour. So when contractions occur, which is the stimulus, this causes the release of oxytocin, which is the response. The release of oxytocin causes even more contractions. So this is positive feedback, as deviation from the optimum value stimulates a change. So the release of oxytocin is a stim stimulation change in this instance results in an even bigger deviation. So the even bigger deviation is more contractions. So that is it for the content and now I'm just going to take you through a couple of exam style questions. So if I just get my highlighter tool out. So the first question is pretty easy, it just asks what is meant by homeostasis. As I said at the start of the video, in an exam when it asks you about the definition of homeostasis, you just need to write that homeostasis is the maintenance or maintaining a constant internal environment. So the next question asks, given one example, explain why homeostasis is important in mammals. So in this question, I'm going to refer to the example of temperature. So this is what I've written. I've written that maintaining body temperature, because that is an example of homeostasis. And I wrote that it is important in mammals because it affects enzyme activity and different deviation from normal body temperatures can result in denaturation of enzymes or decreased enzyme activity, which would obviously be detrimental to many vital biological processes. So let's look at the mark scheme. So the first question, which is the definition of homeostasis, says maintaining a constant internal environment. We wrote that actually word for word, so we would get the mark. So if we move on to the next question, it says here one mark for example of a factor, so temperature, and one mark for explaining its importance. So for example, you could write temperature or pH. We wrote temperature, so we would get one mark. And you would need to written optimum for enzymes or the effect of pH on enzyme activity or the effect of temperature on enzyme activity. We briefly explained the effect of temperature of enzyme activity, so we would get the second mark. Or you can refer to water potential or blood glucose concentration, and then explain the effect of osmotic or blood glucose imbalance on cells. So you can refer to what I said earlier about how blood glucose concentration affects water potential and movement of water in cells. So we would get both marks for this question. Notice how it says two marks. This means that if you put all four of these points here, then you don't get four marks. You can only get a maximum of two. So this is the final question that we are going to look at today, which crosses over with the muscle contraction section. So if you are not familiar with that content, feel free to check out my video about muscle contraction in the corner. So cross-channel swimmers may suffer from muscle fatigue during which the contraction mechanism is disrupted. So we can highlight muscle fatigue here. One factor thought to contribute to muscle fatigue is a decrease in the availability of calcium ions within muscle fibres. Explain how a decrease in the availability of calcium ions could disrupt the contraction mechanism in muscles. As I said in my muscle contraction video, calcium ions are crucial as they bind to tropomyosin which then causes the movement of trophomycin so myosin heads are able to bind to actin. Also it says explain the answer so you don't need to just write what is happening, you need to explain why something happens. So this is what I've written. 
I've written that they cannot interact with trophomycin, so myosin heads can't bind to actin. So let's look at the mark, in, mark scheme. So you can write that they cannot interact with or move trophomycin from binding sites on actin. We wrote this so we would get the mark. Also, you could have written mycin heads do not bind or actin mycin is not formed. We wrote mycin heads do not bind to actin, so we would get the second mark. Also, I did forget to write the third marking point in my answer. I apologise for that. So you need to have written reference to ATPase or ATP. So it does not activate ATPase or energy. It's not released from ATP. So you need to make a reference to a the importance of ATP to get all three marks. Right, that is all I want to say for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions at all, whether they are big or small, please leave them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them and I'll see you in my next video.